Before the arrival of our tūpuna, the bird song, insect song, fish song, the rhythms of te ao Māori, the natural world were strong. Mai ngā maunga ki te moana, from the mountains to the sea. We as a people were strong and adventurous. We were ocean-going voyagers who travelled to the end of the earth to settle in the most southern island that was habitable. The terrain was inhospitable. The weather was challenging. With the coming of people to Aotearoa came the introduction of mammalian predators like the kiore and the kuri. By the time Europeans had arrived our wildlife was under threat and our native bird species were declining at an alarming rate and if nothing was done, the forest would die. New methods to control the onslaught of pests and restore the balance of the forest were introduced. These methods, including trapping and 1080 baits, worked and where they have worked, our native forests, birds, insects and all that lives in the water are once again growing and flourishing. But the use of 1080 has caused concern. How it is used, where it is used and who is using it. Ahuatanga e pāna ki te, te paihana nei, uh, te tēneiti. Uh, anō nei, uh, ko tā rātau uh, mā nuka nuka, uh, mō te, te whakauru tēnei o ngā paihana, he paihana tēnei ki roto i ngā, ngā kai o, o tāua te iwi Māori. Uh, Kene pēr kai te kite mai rātau, uh, tā, tā, rātau tino mā nuka nuka ko te, ko te whakatakoto tēnei o ngā paihana mai te topa topa. Uh, mā reira uh, ka marara haere tēnei o ngā, uh, ngā paihana, ka uru ki roto uh, i, i ngā, ngā wai uh, o, o te ngahere. Uh, mā reira uh, ka whakaaro rātau uh, ka, ko tēnei o pai, ngā paihana ka kainga e ngā tūna e ngā, ngā ika o era o ngā uh, momo awa. My name's uh, Maireen Hardy Birch, and I'm an area manager based in the Kauri Coast, um, mainly the Waipa Forest, the Hokianga Harbour, and the Kaipara Harbour. My experience has been with 1080 um, from an operational perspective. First and foremost, mana whenua um, have to be addressed, and so we we we, are, we identify okay, who is the actual group that has mana whenua of this rohe, and first and foremost, we go and have that conversation with them. So, in one of the operations that we've just finished doing, the key components that actually came out of that conversation was, if you use 1080, my drinking water is going to be affected then that's going to affect the tuna that I eat, it's going to affect the pigs that I love hunting, it's going to affect the watercress and the other different species that's out there. Hi, kua, ko, ko tāku nei um, te tiro, uh, kua noho tahi te iwi Māori, te taha o enei o ngā kaipū tāiao. Uh, ki te āta wero, uh, ngā pātai, ki te āta ui ui ngā pātai uh, ka pēhea uh, tēnei o ngā paihana uh, ka pā atu ki ngā kai o tāua te iwi Māori. Uh, pēnei i te, uh, I te pūha, i te miti, te ahara nei uh, ngā kai. Dr. Sean Ogilvy of Te Aroa and Ngati Awa is a leading member of Lincoln University's Bioprotection and Ecology Division. Māori have been concerned about whether um, 1080 that's dropped from a helicopter could be um, leached out of baits and then taken up by plants that are used for, uh, for medicine and for food. So I've been involved with research to see whether that's, that's true or not, um, starting back in 2003. Dr Ogilvy began the research by looking into the effect 1080 had on karamu and pickle pickle. The results showed pickle pickle did not take up 1080. However, the karamu did, but at an extremely low concentration. For the karamu, it was such a small amount that was present, you'd have to uh, consume 28 tonnes of that plant to, to get a LD50, so to have a 50% chance of, of dying from that 1080. After we did the karamu and the pickle pickle study, we did a similar kind of study with puha and with watercress. The results show that watercress took up a minuscule amount of 1080. 
It was also present in the puha, however, the research showed that puha may naturally produce 1080. Again, at, at, at very low concentrations, um, 15 parts per billion was the highest concentration we saw, which was, um, with that you'd have to consume um, around about 9 tonnes of the, of the puha to get a, a lethal dose. When it comes down to um, what about my puha, what about my watercress, being able to have the conversation with Māori about, well, actually 1080 is derived from a plant and you'll actually find that there's components of 1080 within your puha and within your tea that you drink. With that puha study we did get an interesting result. We, we took 60 plant samples in that experiment. It turns out that 59 of the 60 samples actually already had trace amounts of 1080 there. So um, 1080 uh, seemed to be naturally present in those plants. Extremely low concentrations, right at the very capabilities of, of the equipment but um, certainly seemed to be there, so that was an interesting result. Research was also undertaken to test the effects Teneti has on tuna or eel. Phil Liver and guys at Banke Research did the eel research, so they were studying, um, for example, if a possum ate Teneti bait and then fell into a stream dead, what are the risks of, the, of tuna eating the, eating the possums and then taking up the Teneti and then subsequent risks of, of people um, eating the tuna as well. So they found that there was 1080 in the flesh of the eels afterwards, uh, up, to, up to nine days afterwards. But again, it was very, very low concentrations. Research has been undertaken to come up with alternative methods of pest control that would ultimately limit the use of poisons. Effectiveness, cost, side effects will all need to be considered to find an alternative. The top thing we should be thinking about is, is protecting the tongue, you know, protecting the bush. Um, so we've been working for a number of years now and working on increasing the options in the toolbox, different things that could be used as alternatives to 1080. Uh, we're working very hard on that. 1080 is only one of a range of tools the Department of Conservation uses to control pests. Ground control applications such as bait stations and trapping are also used frequently. However, much of the land needing to be controlled is mountainous, dangerous and too vast for ground control alone to be effective. The independent organisation Ngā Rahui has been established to help iwi retain and protect their forests. Dennis Peters heads the pest control team. We basically carry out a pre-survey which looks at the immediate health of their forests along with the pest impacts and we, we take those findings back to the people, we sit down with them uh, and we then go through a process of just explaining, look, these are the priorities, uh, this is what's hurting the land, uh, and these are the actions that need to occur if we're to uh, heal it. Where possible, we use leg hole traps, ground trapping techniques. Of course, that's limited where the access is quite um, dangerous. The other alternative, obviously, is the use of 1080. Kevin Prime is a farmer, conservationist and kaumatu who has spent years working with his iwi to protect their home forests in Te Tai Tokoreu from the onslaught of introduced predators. Basically we oppose poisons, we don't really like poisons, but the alternatives we had to weigh up was do we want to have lots of pigeons or do we want to have um, uh, lots of possums and essentially we settled that we'd prefer to have no possums and lots of pigeons. The day we put in the 1080, you know, that I could remember that night, it was just silent. No, normally in the forest you hear those squawks of possums all night, very few milk porks or anything, but then that one night was silent. A couple of days after that, there were dead, dying possums all in the small area we saw about eight dead rats, and they only come to eat the konga konga, the, um, the scraps that are left over because the possums would get all the big bits out. It was quite um, an experience really. For the 18 months before the pest eradication program, they monitored seven pigeon nests. Before the program, no pigeon chicks survived. In the season following the 1080 program, all the chicks survived in all the nests. So from 100% failure to two years later, 100% success, I think that was well worth it. Elsewhere in Aotearoa, native wildlife and plants are rejuvenating through pest control programs involving 1080. In the Kaingaroa forest, falcon pairs have increased from 20 to 36. 
in the Tongariro forest, the survival of fio or blue duck chicks has doubled. And where once two thirds of kiwi chicks would be killed by predators, now, after a 1080 program, over 60% survive to adulthood. And on the west coast of the South Island, the rata is once again blooming. When you are talking for Karede, you are making a matu a tupuna, Momata, Kite Kore, Tata, a mahi for a mahi te neonga, ma paihana, a kangaro hire, when they are talking. Quera, quera tapu, Mate nohotahi, Mate ata korero, e te papa ta fai, a kibuto tawa ne iwi, a kam mohio pai mai rata, a kachika me 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 mafaka mahi te neonga, ma paihana. I guess my message would be that in terms of, of forming an opinion on 1080, um, just ask that people um, get as much information as they can and be informed on, on that opinion and, and, and not to be swayed by, um, by um, one-sided arguments in there. That's the nature of 1080 really, it's, it, it's, it's um, so controversial, it's, it's fairly easy to be swayed by one-sided arguments. Kakano, Iruya Mai, 